Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again, and today is the start of a brand new challenge right here on NHL 20. Over the past month on Twitch, I had run a challenge on Madden, undrafted free agents only. Could we build a championship team out of the players that nobody else wanted? And ultimately... We were successful, so the question now is whether or not we can do the same thing here on NHL 20. Can we take a team out of the players that nobody else wanted? No trading, no draft picks, only signing undrafted free agents. Can we build a winning team out of that? You look at arguably the best undrafted player ever, Martin St. Louis, Hockey Hall of Famer. He is kind of the inspiration for this series, and as far as using the main Mariners, a lot of people are asking, oh, hey, you can lose, you can use the logo now. Are you going to use the team? So I said, screw it. This is already a weird challenge. We got St. Louis on the thumbnail. We're using the main Mariners. We can only, only take undrafted players, and hopefully... Hopefully we end up with an A-grade coaching staff because that is going to be the key to get any of these guys to take that step forward and actually be worth having on the team. Or it's going to rely on us getting extremely lucky when it comes to finding gems that snuck through the draft. So today... We are going to get this team set up for our first season. In terms of setup, however, you'll notice owner mode's off. Again, I mentioned this at the beginning of the Sharks episode that went up alongside this. It's fine, but in terms of it adding a lot, even with it being like, you know, the whole auto setting now, it's really not worth having on for the sake of a YouTube series at the very least. When it comes to anything else, Pretty straightforward, much like I said for the beginning of the Shark series as well. Sim engine scoring is going to be on medium for now. I've played with it on high. I want to see what happens on medium. With it on high, scoring is undoubtedly higher, but ultimately it's an extreme rarity to see a goalie save percentage over a 920. Fog of War is off, of course. Love Fog of War, but it doesn't make too much sense for the sake of a YouTube series. Injuries are also on, but we have lowered the slider. We can adjust it from there if need be. As opposed to the Shark series, I'd, I'd say the series is much more likely to end up with injuries off at some point. So let's get right down to it. Again, this is a 30-second team expansion because it's going to be much easier to set everything up and get the ball rolling on this series. We are starting from scratch. Now we end up with the second overall pick in this draft, but we will not be allowed to make that pick, which is going to be a nightmare. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I really don't. But a lot of people after doing this challenge in Madden wanted me to try this here. Why the hell not is what I said, and why the hell not is what I say now. So we will see if this works. We have had some difficult challenges you know at numerous points in this uh you know in this channel's history this might be the most ridiculous as i was hoping to find oh we'll take kevin boyle i guess we are gonna have to end up taking some players that still have term left that's pretty much all i'm looking for is any player that we could cut after the first year or two and i think that's pretty much all we're going to have to deal with here as far as setting up this team. Again, none of these players will be on the team long term. I think I just want to look for who the goalies are going to be to start. So like, Dan, ah, Dan Vladar is actually, he actually has potential. When it comes to the expansion draft, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have shown me examples of the AI letting go of players that they probably shouldn't be letting go of. Robin Leonard in Chicago, for example, instead of Corey Crawford. We're not going to take advantage of that. We will take, uh, I think this is Trent Miner? Huh. That's not supposed to be allowed, considering he's not under contract, but we'll take him and let him go, ultimately. Let's get the goaltending out of the way. The good thing about this series idea, as opposed to, we'll take Kivleniex as well, as opposed to the Shark series that we're starting, which is more of a straightforward run, is that we can just get right down to business with this. It's pretty straightforward, 
we can't do anything <laughs> until we end up getting into the aftermath of a draft. So when it comes to our draft picks, we will be trading them away every single time. Just consistently trading down, getting picks for next year. Let's take Jared Coro as well, and that at least solves the goaltending issue. And you know what? From here, let's just make sure that we're taking the lowest overall guy available with two years left on the contract, and we'll sort it out from there. Like I said, long term, nobody that we're selecting here is going to be a part of this team, although by the end of this, we might very well wish that they were because this, this, could, this could be an absolutely horrific failure. <laughs> If there was ever a series where I'm, I'm going into it with no confidence whatsoever, this is it. I can, I can see why this would work in Madden, especially with the way it works this year and the breakout players. This working in, in, in NHL just doesn't seem likely, but I'm excited to give it a try. Ultimately, I talked about this in the, in the San Jose episode that went up alongside this as well. I was planning on doing a Legend series at the start, but with the state of those rosters, the alumni rosters and the way they are, I'm like, okay, it's, screw it. We're clearly going to have to do something else. And here we are. We'll take Carl Dahlstrom. I know he was not a one-year deal, but it's okay. I can, I can trade away whoever and get rid of whoever. I just didn't want the AI to take, you know, players who are actually half decent. I guess technically we could let them take whoever, but it's fine. I mean, we're going to have a pretty rough time filling out the roster with anybody who's half decent. I uh, I can't wait to see how this goes because it's just, it's, it's going to be rough. You talk about a normal draft of glory. And again, we started that draft of glory series. The first one was on NHL 17. And you talk about some of the challenges that we've had over the past few years, whether in that draft of glory format or a Nations United format, this, the, I can't see like how this wouldn't be the most difficult one. Let me know if you've been a long-term viewer in terms of what you think the most difficult challenge series we've ever done on this channel is. Undrafted, free agents only. Seems like it's going to be the biggest pain in the ass. I, I can't help but feel that way. So let's see, Brian Strait. Oh, what a, what a gem Brian Strait is. Islanders fans just cringed at the at the, the mention of his name. Wow, the Rangers are getting rid of a lot of younger dudes. Uh, we'll take Levi Alton away from you, I guess. There's not really anybody else left to take away. Uh, we'll also take on Andreas Englund from Philadelphia. They have JVR up there. Let's take away Kyle Criscuolo. Pittsburgh, who's it going to be? They have Patrick Hornquist available. We're going to take Dominic Uhler, who should not be there. I think that's the one rare player that I missed. Let me actually just make a note of that. I think that's the one rare player I missed. Fortunately, if a player still has NHL rights with the team, there you go, Brent Burns is available. Uh, if a player still has rights with an NHL team, EA will still give them the rights in the game, even though that kind of screws stuff up because the AI typically auto-signs them. Uh, the editing doc, there's a video up for that today as well. Uh, the editing doc, you'll notice that I remove most of those players, but I'm not surprised someone kind of snuck through. Matt Spencer, I wish I could take you. Rebuilding hockey town legend. Matt Spencer. Gotta love him. But he will not be the legend of this series. We must find new legends. Because, let's be honest, NHL 19, there were some good players for us in NHL 19. I, I don't know if we had, uh, I don't know if we had legends per se. I don't know if we had legends per se. There, there were some good players, for sure. But, we still talk about, you think about the NHL 16 Vancouver series, we still talk about Essa Hall. You think back to, I mean, rebuilding Hockey Town with Nick Haig and Matt Spencer. There, there are some legendary names in this channel's history. NHL 19 might be a little bit more hit or miss. I mean, Frederick McDonough, the biggest legend of them all. And if you do not know that name, Draft of Glory Goon Squad is the series for you. So the expansion draft is done. And again, we will not be drafting anybody 
at any point through the duration <laughs> of this series. Oh, God. All right. Well, Colorado ended up with the number one pick. So, you know what? Let's just, whoever, whoever the worst team is, let's just throw draft picks their way and help rebuild them on the fly. That's pretty much what we're looking at. So, I'll take a 2024 seventh round pick. Thank you very much, Colorado. That is certainly a no-brainer for you, is it not? And in terms of 2019, we're almost out of this. Let's just go ahead and trade away those picks next year, too. Screw it. Hand me that 2023 seventh rounder. And just like that, we are out of this draft. <laughs> oh, God, what have, what have I gotten myself into? Whew, this is, this is going to be rough. So let's sim through the rest of this draft. The extra draft, of course, that it's the one downside is that there isn't the extra draft there. Uh, but there you see the computer generated names that went early in this draft. Of course, the first year draft that's really there, there'll be a lot of those added players and everything. So, in terms of the re sign phase, not too concerned. Literally, anybody that I can let go of, I'm going to let go of. I'm not going to manually. You know, let go of these guys. And if we're stuck with these guys, which it looks like we are pretty much stuck with everybody for this year, I'm cool with that because we do need players to fill out the roster anyway. This first year, let's be honest too, with the players that are going to be available, there aren't going to be that many that escape through the draft. So this first year, it's going to be a little bit of a slow and steady approach. But Ryan Mantha, Dominic Uhr, uh, they are going to be on the way out. The big question here is coaching staff, but we'll take a look at free agency first just to see if somehow, some way, uh, somebody made it out of the draft. So if we look at RFAs, or it wouldn't be RFAs, my bad, it would be, God, I can't, I'm going to have to sort by age too. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Let's sort by age. And anybody who's around 19 to 20 years old. Is there anybody here with a half-decent potential? <laughs> Doesn't look like it, does it? Oh, God. Oh, that's rough. It's just all the players from the extra draft that just get dumped onto the free agent list that you never see make it. It's, it's not a pretty sight. There's a low backup. Jordan Hallett, though, was drafted in real life, or was he not? He, he was drafted in real life. I swear he was. I do know Arvid Holm was drafted by the Jets. So he will not be available. So our best option here is to go to the group of 19-year-olds. And let's see. We have a 63. Kote Kaz Kazanave, would it be? Cool. And there's another 63, Popovich. There's also a 64 in Welsh. So Matthew Welsh, looks like he played for Charlottetown, the charlatan. He's 5'11". Oh, God, he's still going to be the first goalie that I sign. And we'll hope by some miracle he makes it. Anthony Popovich will also be signed. And where was the other one here? Tristan Cote. Would it be Kazanave or Kazanave? I don't know. Regardless... We're going to sign him, too, just so we have a couple of options in goal. We have $65 million to spend as well. Defensively, Berglund, I'm pretty sure, was drafted. Yeah, he was a Bruins draft pick. That's why I was pretty sure. Anybody else in terms of potential, please? <laughs> they're all going to be... Oh, they're all going to be so bad. Yeah, they are. They are all terrible. Again, early stages, probably RV was uh, was drafted. Early stages, we're not going to have that much help. It's going to have to be once the once the CHL has kind of cleansed itself of these lower-rated guys, although Matthias Zellinger was not drafted. Cool. Let's take him. That high AHL top two. This guy's our freaking Ray Bork. <laughs> He's the best we got. Walfordson was drafted. Uh, Galvis was drafted. He's a Blackhawks pick. Hunter Drew was also drafted. Oh, God. And then we're up to the 21. Okay, so 
Again, we will look for the youngest group of players here. Wow, I didn't realize we were going to have to scroll so far back up, but that's okay. Uh, we will look at the highest rated 19 year olds and take it from there. So, uh, Antoine Crit Bezile. I'm guessing Crete might be Cret, but regardless, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign him. Uh, we are also going to go. Was Yana Coin drafted? He was not. Let's pick up Yana Coin. Anybody over a 60 is pretty much what we're looking at. Christensen, Jacob Christensen, was not drafted. A 63 overall. My God. He's the best player on the team. Uh, 62 overall, Braden Patchell? Pachal. Patchell. I'm going to go with Patchell. Pockle. You never know. Uh, Joseph Berger has incredible flow. He's Swedish, so it makes sense. Let's sign him up as well. And if our coach, our eventual coaching staff, can turn any of these guys... I thought Sergei Sapego was drafted. I'm going to take him. If our coaching staff... What are we up to? Oh, yeah, we got all the room in the world. If our coaching staff can turn any of these guys into winners, then my God. But that's pretty much what this is about. High teaching stats for coaches, pretty much supposed to secure us, you know, the ability to see potentials go up. That's the main thing that we're testing here. So forward-wise, Shane Bulitka. Shane Bulitka, welcome aboard, sir. Uh, anybody else at this point? Uh, Martinson was drafted. Or he was signed by the Capitals. Philip Spinningson also not available. We need anybody. I mean, they need to be a medium top six at least, and preferably a 60. Jacob Peterson was drafted by Dallas. So that is not going to work. Joseph Gareffa. Incredible eyebrows. Former Kitchener Ranger. Uh, we'll look to sign him up. Anybody else? Yannick Bruschweiler. What a name. Every team needs a Yannick. And we have one. Uh, hello, Matt Struthers. Not drafted. I could have sworn he was. Matthew Struthers. Come on down. Maybe he's, he's at a training camp for an NHL team right now. Maybe that's why I thought he was drafted. We have Seer. Mika Seer. I'm guessing. Yeah, the French names, dude. I'm pretty sure that's right. You'll crucify me if it's not anyway, I know. Grouchy! It's probably Grouchy, but we're calling him the Grouch. The Grouch. Team Captain Matthew the Grouch. Hopefully he doesn't live in a trash can. Yes, I know, uh, there is Dickner, and it's hilarious, but I'm not going to sign him. Uh, do we have anybody else? Anybody else? Does anybody want to be good? Gutenberg! Connor Gutenberg. I think a former Brandon Wheat King, if I'm not mistaken. Sign him up, and we are looking okay. I'm thinking two more contracts to bring us to 46 is the goal. Max Patterson, 6'4". A bear on skates. Uh, topping, hello. Also, there's Connor Bruggenkate, which is a hell of a name, but 65 overall Kyle Topping. Not, you know, not drafted, undrafted player from the Kelowna Rockets. Sign him up. That brings us to 46 contracts for now. And unless... Yeah, that guy's potential is kind of bad. I think we're good. Those will be the initial signees on this team. Uh, you know, let's go for Ryan Hughes as well, though, for the hell of it. Just because we, we happen to check there. That's the cutoff. That is the cutoff. Those are the first couple of guys that we're picking up. None of them are that good at all. But you never know, there might be a miracle. And again, the NHL team that will run this year will be made up of the guys from the expansion draft. Holy head coach, really? It gave us an A- minus out of the gates. No way. Whew. Oh my god. Well, he doesn't have an A in teaching, but Melvin Holpe. Holy hell. That is a solid coach. A B in teaching. There is no reason to fire this guy. At all. And the rest of the coaching staff, they all, they all have A's. I think, I think we're going to be fine. I don't think we have to fire anybody. That's insane. Game, you are so kind to hand me such a decent coaching staff right out of the gates. I was not expecting that. That is a huge weight off of my shoulders. 
as if we look at NHL head coaches, yeah, I mean, there's nobody available. So it's just like, nope, here you go. That's that's who's available to you. So we're good. Uh, in terms of scouts, what are we at? doesn't tell me how many scouts I have from this menu, which kind of sucks. I can add up the numbers at the bottom, but I'm too lazy to math. Coaching staff. Coaching staff, coaching staff. We have 18 out of 20. Let's get rid of these dudes. And again, this is why owner mode's not on right now, because I... I need all the help I can get when it comes to having the staff be able to help me out because scouting is still going to be important even though we can't well actually I guess it isn't <laughs> now that I think about it now that I think about it scouting is not going to be that important because fog of war is not on if fog of war was on it would be important so screw it I don't have to worry about scouts at all that's nice I literally just have to worry about the coaching staff jeez no well, that makes that makes every free agency period pretty straightforward and simple, doesn't it? As we sign up a bunch of our dudes who will probably not amount... If one of them, one of them amounts to anything in his career, we are laughing all the way to the bank. If just one of those medium AHL top six guys out of the forward group turns into a top nine, he's going to be a superstar. He's going to be a team Hall of Famer as Montreal trades Paul Byron to Dallas for Albin Erickson and a third. That's not a bad deal. I don't know why Montreal would want to get rid of Paul Byron, but okay. Again, as far as updated rosters, my custom rosters, that is absolutely being implemented here. Again, there was the editing doc that was out there alongside this and the first episode of the San Jose Sharks franchise mode that we also have going on. So for this year... We don't have to do anything. We just have to hope that our coach doesn't quit, which I don't think coaches can quit, but you get the point. It's going to be rough. As far as where we finish in the draft, it doesn't matter. We know that we're going to be a bad team, so when we begin this season, we are good to just sim straight through, get to the end of the draft, and hope and pray that there are some decent players left over. Now again, for the first two years, I don't really expect us to be able to pick up anybody all that decent. I mean, the odds of us getting a medium elite or a low elite, incredibly low. But if we do, we're going to celebrate it <laughs> like we just cloned prime Wayne Gretzky and he's playing all 12 forward spots. Screw defense. He's playing every, he's playing every defensive spot. Wayne Gretzky's in goal too. Why not? But we're playing in the 1920s with Wayne Gretzky being as good as he is. It would just, it's a party. It's a celebration. You get the point. Now that you kind of know what this series is going to be, I'm going to call it an episode. And hopefully the hooks are in. The intrigue is there. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think. Are we ever going to make the playoffs? Are we ever going to have a winning season? And can we, can, I'm not even going to ask you if we can win the whole damn thing. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's let's be honest here. We're not winning. We're not winning a, a championship. But if we can make the playoffs, I will consider that a massive success. And for those who want to see the jerseys, I, I recreated them as best I could. Uh, they're, they're a little bit difficult to recreate in this game. But yeah, there you go. Guys, I will see you in the next one, I hope. Thank you very much for watching. You know the deal. Drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one where this psychotic journey truly begins.